Hey, how is going? Adam here. Today I'm gonna want to talk about Pigeon. Pigeon is an experimental network protocol able to be easily implemented on the most computers and microcontrollers that transmits data on top of many other communication protocols, physical layers and media. Since 2010, Giovanni Blumitolo has worked on the specifications and the implementation with the support of many independent researchers. Today, a growing community is working with this open standard aiming for a free, global, decentralized network privately made by makers. It is cool to discover that there are already academic researchers who are analyzing the protocol and its features, publishing studies and PhDs. The flexibility of Pigeon enables we users to quickly prototype, configure and deploy a networking application using only one protocol and only one implementation across widely different system and physical layers. This can be really useful for home automation, robotics and industry 4.0 application. Especially because it is totally open source and free to use. Thanks to the interface's abstractions, the same code base can be compiled in all supported devices. You can check out the list on the Pigeon GitHub page. Thanks to the strategy's abstractions, Pigeon can operate transparently on a wide range of media and protocols. For example, we can use Pigeon over TCP, UDP, RS-485 or LoRa. Although Giovanni and other researchers have released many low-level data link protocols like the one we're gonna review soon. Let's try the simple Pigeon application example. We can use two Arduino Nano to test Pigeon using its software bit bank strategy. Let's bring our Arduino Nano with the headers already soldered and place it in between two breadboards so you can have a nice fit and make it easier to test. It is the first strategy made by Giovanni, which development started in 2010, that proposes a flexible, open and free alternative to the one-wire protocol. With software Bitbank, it is possible to create a network of many devices connected to the same wire that can be up to 50 meters long, although we will try to exceed this length and see what happens. Incredible to see that the whole implementation, while being full of comments, it's only 323 lines of code. With them in place, you will also need some ribbon cable wires and a mini USB cable to connect them to our PC. If you want to power the two Arduino separately, let's take two wires and a micro USB breakout board and solder them together. The black to the GND and orange to VCC. With it soldered, let's plug it into one of our power rail of the breadboard. Now we can plug any 5V power adapter to it. Worth mentioning that for testing purpose I use 5V, but in home automation setup, more probably, you will use the internal voltage regulator, feeding it between 7 and 10V. Now, take 4 wires from the ribbon cable and let's connect them to the power rail. Connect the plus wire to the 5V pin on an Arduino and the ground to the ground one. Do the same for the other one and we are set. We can now power both of the Arduino from a rail or you can do it separately, one from the USB port of the PC and one from the 5V that we added. Plug the USB into one of the Arduino and into our PC. As a note, protective circuitry should be also be used but for testing is not necessary. We will go into it a bit later on. Let's get to our PC and go on Google and search for Arduino. Go on Arduino software and download the latest version of the IDE. Here you can also contribute to the Arduino software. Install Arduino IDE and open it. Now let's install the Pigeon library. Go into Sketch, Include Library, Manage Library and search for Pigeon. Select the latest version and hit Install. With it done, we are ready to flash. Let's program the network analysis example and let's start with the receiver. Go to Examples Scroll down for Pigeon, Arduino, Local, Software Bit Bang, 
Network Analysis, Receiver. Now we need to select our board. Go to Tools, Board and choose Arduino Nano. Also, go to Tools and choose your COM port and all we need to do is to hit Upload on the top left corner. If you get this error, your board might use the old bootloader. What you will need to do is to update the libraries, hit on Update and now hit Tools, Processor and choose the old bootloader. Now it should be good to go. Let's try it now. And it's done. Now let's flash the transmitter also. So go to Examples, Pigeon, Arduino, Local, Software Bit Bank, Network Analysis and Transmitter. Let's flash this also. Before we connect it to our PC, we need to connect a wire to pin 12 of both of the Arduino. This will be our data transmission medium. So with the wire connected, let's plug the USB into our transmitter Arduino and let's get back to into our PC. On the transmitter, open Serial Monitor, click top right button, be sure to have selected 150,200 baud speed and data should be now transmitted. This example is designed to test the connectivity and the transmitter. Continuously transmits a stream of packets and the maximum speed achievable. You can see the printed number of packets and the accuracy of the signal. It is also able to operate in spite of the interference, so let's test that. Let's bring another cable, so we can test with a longer length. Let's disconnect the pin 12 cable and add a cable in between the two and let's see how that performs. And success! It transmits 58 packets through the single wire and the communication is stable. With that done, now let's give a test to the claim that it works with any transmission media. So let's see if the packet can travel through my body. Let's touch both pins and see. And it works. Even though the packets are lower in number, the human body might not be the perfect transmission medium out there, even though we are 80% made out of water. So let's take the 20% out of the fraction and let's see how it performs in 100% water. I bring a cup and let's dip the two ends into the water and see. 51 packets sent and a larger bandwidth than through my body. Nice. For our last test, I would like to push the 50 meter test that was done with a 100 meters one. So let's bring a spool of 100 meter wire and expose the wire ends. Connect each end to the 12 pin of the Arduino. And victory! We got 51 packets sent over the 100 meters wire. We can see that 7 packets are not transmitted. That's because of the induced interference in the huge coil of wire. And that applying a pull down resistor of around 1 mega ohm, the problem should be solved and you should get back to 58. A pull down resistor is a resistor used to ensure a known state of for a signal. In this particular case, it is used to ensure that induced interference is grounded and the default state of the bus is kept low. 1 mega ohm is the value suggested for the pull down resistor that filters only interference and not the transmitted signals. The current limiting resistor that just connects the Arduino pin to the bus should be there to reduce the maximum amount of current that can pass through the Arduino pin, avoiding the risk of frying the pin. In conclusion, I think the coolest thing is that it works on many different devices at a speed that is more than enough for most low data rate applications like home automation, robotics and industry 4.0 applications. If a faster speed is required, it also exists mode 2 for 2.21 kilobits per second, mode 3 for 2.94 kilobits per second, and mode 4 for 3.40 kilobits per second. If you want to learn more, be sure to check out the Pigeon GitHub page, and also if you are like me and you like physical books, Giovanni has a printed book that goes through all the research done until now. In conclusion, I really like the simplicity and the versatility of the protocol, 
and really looking forward in learning more and applying it in home automation or other projects that might come along. Also, a big thank you to Giovanni Blue who helped me along the way and supporting the making of the video. Also, stayed until now, I hope you liked the video and it wouldn't hurt to hit that subscribe button. My name is Adam and I will see you in the next one.